somewhere down the road, there might be a new rule that says, hey, if you sell more than $2,000 worth of gold, or, you know, which would be like maybe an ounce of gold, right? That there might be a 1099. So I've told people if they've got their cushion done, maybe it is wiser to buy some of the smaller fractional co coins, because then maybe, you know, you'll be able to fly under the radar, you know, in 20 or 30 years when, you know, you're retired, you just want to go down and get enough spending money for the week or something. So I'm down here at Center Street Gold and Silver, and oh, wow, they've got a ton of really cool stuff in stock here. And I'm talking to Dennis, the owner. Dennis, a lot of people have been asking me when they go to sell their bullion, um, do they just bring it in to the coin shop? Or, I mean, is there any limit to how much they can sell? Is there anything like that they should know about? You know, it's just as easy as buying it. You bring it in, you hand it to me, I write a ticket, I verify that, you know, the product is, you know, actually what it's, what it is. I look at the screen, I go, here's the price. I ask, do you want cash or a check? And, and that's it. And that's it. Bingo, wow. bango. Uh, there's not a lot of reporting requirements. Um, there are in larger volumes. Oddly enough, it's not a dollar amount, it's actually the number of items you're selling me and according to the rules as i understand it if you bring me in a thousand dollar face value bag of 90 percent us coinage uh, which today is worth about twenty thousand bucks i need to do a 1099 if you bring me in more than a thousand ounces of bar silver i'm supposed to do a 1099 uh, if you brought me in a monster box or two or four or five monster boxes of eagles, I have no reporting requirement. Over here on sdbullion.com, I was able to find the list of items that will trigger a 1099 form if you sell them to a bullion dealer in these quantities or greater. So just as Dennis mentioned, you have the 90% constitutional silver coins, 1,000 face value or greater, silver bars or rounds, 1,000 ounces or more, for gold, you have a kilo or more of bars or rounds. And then for gold coins, you have 25 ounces or greater in one ounce gold maple leaves, gold Krugerrands, or gold Mexican Anza coins. For platinum, it's 25 ounces or more. And for palladium, it's 100 ounces or more. Now, if you don't live near a coin shop and you want to actually sell to SD Bullion, just go to their main page and click on Sell to Us. And then all you have have to do is actually call this number right here to start the process and SD bullion actually does have all of their buyback prices listed which is really cool this is how much they're paying over spot for these items not a lot of online bullion dealers actually show the buyback prices so it's really cool that SD bullion actually does that so when you do a 1099 I mean you're taking this person's Informate like their social security right. and the full name and all that stuff. They got to put all that information down. Yes, exactly. Wow. Exactly. But if they're selling a smaller amount, let's say they're just selling a one ounce gold coin or you know ten ounces of silver or whatever. There's there's no reporting requirements on your end, correct? That's that's our understanding. Okay. And and here's just a tidbit here too that I've thought about a little bit is that they could change a lot. You know, when Obamacare came into uh, existence, part of that law is they wanted to have coin dealers do 1099s on anything over 600 bucks. The coin lobby just went nuts because you can imagine, I've got this one shop here, but imagine all these coin deals and all these numismatic coins that are worth thousands or hundreds or, or even less, whatever, $800, whatever, to have to do a 1099 on every single transaction was just too much. Yeah. So they were able to get that out of the language. About six months ago, I heard some senator or representative back east was thinking about putting into law, absolutely, if you bought any gold coin in the U.S., it wouldn't, it wouldn't be taxable. Right? Really? But when I hear that, I start thinking, well, they're not going to tax one thing. They might try to attack something else. So maybe somewhere down the road, 
there might be a new rule that says, hey, if you sell more than $2,000 worth of gold, or you know, which would be like maybe an ounce of gold, right? That there might be a 1099. So I've told people if they've got their cushion done, maybe it is wiser to buy some of the smaller fractional co coins, because then maybe you know you'll be able to fly under the radar, you know, in 20 or 30 years when you know you're retired and you just want to go down and get enough spending money from the week or something. Right, or maybe right. even silver. I mean, if all you have is one ounce gold coins, you diversify into silver, you could easily sell that stuff. No, exactly, exactly. And the nice thing about silver and smaller units, I mean, it's it's very divisible. I mean, right? You, hey, you can get rid of one or two at a time and. No big deal, right? So one question that people have asked is if they bring like a whole monster box of American Silver Eagles, they wouldn't have any trouble selling it, right? Well, they won't here. I mean, just some shops, a lot of the coin shops out there, they really are not, they kind of do a few, they do a little bit of this just because they need to keep their customers, right? But they're not really doing bullion. So a lot of times when you're dealing with that kind of volume, some of the actually coin shops will defer you to a bullion shop. Really? I mean, I mean that's been my experience in the local community. Um, uh, but but hey, all you have to do is call them and go, hey, I got a monster box. What do you pay me? Yeah, that, that's a really good advice. Just call the shop and make sure they can handle it. Right. I think it's always good. In fact, this really helps us as dealers, we started having people make appointments. I used to just be an open door and do whatever. And actually, by having appointments or having people call ahead, it would help me kind of know what product I needed to have ready or product that was coming in. So there's, it was always a frustration like, oh, I just pick up the phone and order a monster box and in 20 minutes somebody would walk in with one. So it really helps the coin shop know what's coming in and they can also make sure that if you've got an appointment, like no one else is standing there watching you, you know, get 15 or 20,000 bucks in cash. I know one thing that people have been talking about is sort of the, what's like the, the lowest you will pay. I mean, if someone is bringing in like three nines fine silver, typically most shops are gonna pay them at least spot, right? Well, that varies. Right now we're buying all of our uh, one ounce coins at about about a buck fifty over. Over spot. Right. Okay. Right, right. Just, but that's because of the demand, obviously. Right. Right. Um, Pre-COVID, quite frankly, we were fifty cents under spot, and that had been like that for maybe fifteen years. I mean, really, that was. I mean, maybe it went up a little bit, but usually it was right around spot. The, the caveat there would be it have to be retail friendly product. Sure. It can't be something that was buried in the backyard in the farm and you know <laughs> because believe me we've seen that kind of stuff come in so what about like milk spotted maple leaves i mean would you consider those retail worthy or would you pay less we would pay a little bit less for those as okay. soon as something gets damaged or defaced it, you know what it really goes to the round price in, in my shop okay and i will sell them like that too if they're milky i'm not going to sell them like a brand new product so if someone even has American Silver Eagles that are all scratched up and dinged and they look nasty, you basically just treat them like a round at that point? Exactly. Okay, exactly. does that go for gold too? I mean... It, it does. Um, here's my rule of thumb. And basically, uh, in the gold arena, you've got three nines product from old maple leaves, but you also have, what can happen with pure gold is it gets red spots on it. So bottom line, at my shop, if it has a red spot on it or a scratch on it, I take 20 bucks off. Okay. And But if it has a red spot on it and scratch, I'll sell it for 20 bucks cheaper. And usually, quite frankly, I'll do it cheaper than that because somebody might bring me in 10 of them like that, you know, from a tube that they just played around and did junk with it. And I go, hey, I want to get rid of it. So, you know, I do a daily special or something. I'll put it out there on, you know through my little network and go, hey, anybody want to buy gold really cheap? One thing that not a lot of coin shops do that you guys in particular do, which I really like, is you put your buyback prices on your website. And I feel like a lot of dealers don't do that and maybe they don't do it on purpose. But I mean, and you even post it right here. Like when people come in the shop, they can see exactly what you guys are paying for each product. 
And I, I personally think that's really cool. I think all of the dealers should do that. Well, it does cost a lot of money to have a website that actually is functional <laughs> and, you know, and, and does that trick. So, but you're right. I mean, and I know that there's other shops out there that have my screens in the shop. Really? <laughs> but they're facing inward, not outward. Exactly. <laughs> they go, what are, what are you paying? Well, let me check here. And they go, oh, I see your sign up. It's a really great service that you guys are offering that. And me as a customer, I really appreciate that transparency. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Hey, you got it. You know, hey, we got to treat everybody equally. And the guy that's buying one ounce, the guy who's buying half a million, you know, they're both beautiful customers, really. Seriously. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. I appreciate the time. You got to take care. The last thing regarding selling your gold and silver is capital gains tax. Now, obviously, depending on what country you live in, this will vary. And I'm not a tax expert, so I'm not going to go into this. But you are supposed to pay capital gains tax if you actually make money off of your gold or your silver investment. So, you know, when you buy this stuff, a lot of times you buy it with cash. And then when you go and you sell it, you sell it for cash so you know it's cash in cash out and unless you're doing those large quantities like we talked about you're not gonna have to fill out any irs forms or anything like that so that's all i'm gonna say regarding capital gains tax i know you can figure this one out for yourself um if you have any questions about selling gold or selling silver feel free to put those down below in the comment section and i do want to say a massive thank you so much for watching my video and i will see you all in the next one silver dragon out.